In question 6, we have to find the angle measure x in each of the following figures. So we are given these four figures A, B, C and D. In each of these four figures you can see that there is an unknown angle. So in the first figure it's here, this angle x. In the second figure it's here. In the third figure we have these two angles, both of them marked x. And in the fourth figure we have this regular pentagon and the angle at one vertex is marked as x. So in each case we have to find the value of x, the measure of the angle x. So let's do this part by part. So let's start with part 1. In part A we have this quadrilateral in which three of the four angles are known, their measures are known. So we have 50 degrees, we have 130 degrees, we have 120 degrees but we don't know the measure of angle x. So what we can do is we can use the angle sum uh, property of a quadrilateral. We have earlier seen in a previous question in this exercise that the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral, in any quadrilateral will be equal to 360 degrees. And we basically proved this by splitting up the quadrilateral into two triangular parts. If you want you can go back and look at that proof. But we are going to use this result directly that the sum of angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees which means that if we put together the four angles 50 degrees plus 130 degrees plus 120 degrees plus this unknown angle x what we should get is 360 degrees and this is how we can find the measure of x so 50 plus 130 is 180 180 plus 120 is 300 so we get 300 degrees plus x is equal to 360 degrees and this gives us the value of x, uh, the measure of x. x is equal to 360 degrees minus 300 degrees. So this will be equal to 60 degrees. So the measure of angle x in part A is 60 degrees. This is the answer for part A. Now let's do part B. In part B we have again this quadrilateral in which we can see two of the interior angles are known. So we have 60 degrees and we have 70 degrees. We have this unknown angle x but we don't know this fourth angle here. It's not given directly but this angle here to the left is given. This angle is 90 degrees. It's shown as 90 degrees which means that this angle here will also be equal to 90 degrees because these two angles form a linear pair of angles. So let me emphasize this again. The angle here which is 90 and the angle on this side they form a linear pair of angles and the angle to the left is given it's uh, highlighted as 90 degrees which means that the angle to the right will also be equal to 90 degrees so basically what we have again is three of the four angles of the quadrilateral are known 70 degrees 60 degrees and 90 degrees and using this we have to find the value of the measure of x so again we can use the fact that the sum of the angles will be equal to 360 degrees. Some of the angles inside the quadrilateral will be 360 degrees. So we have 70 degrees the first angle plus 60 degrees the second angle plus this angle here 90 degrees the one that we calculated plus the unknown angle x this will be equal to this sum will be equal to 360 degrees. Alright now 70 plus 60 is 130, 130 plus 90 is 220 so we get 220 degrees plus x on the LHS and on the RHS we get 360 degrees and this gives us the measure of x. So x will be equal to 360 degrees minus 220 degrees and this will be equal to 140 degrees. So the measure of x in part B is 140 degrees. This is the answer for part B. Now let's go to part C. In part C we have this figure here which you can see is a pentagon. It has five sides so if you want you can mark the vertices of the pentagon A, B, C, D and E. So we have this pentagon and in this pentagon we have one angle marked 30 degrees. Two of the angles have the same measure X and X and we don't know the angles um, 
at C and D, but we are given the angle to the left of C and the angle to the right of D here. So using this, we can find the interior angles at C and D. So we are given the exterior angles at C and D. Using that, we can find the interior angles at C and uh, D. So let's find this. So angle C interior, let me write it like this. Angle C interior will be 180 degrees minus this 70 degree angle here. So 180 degrees minus 70 degrees. So this will be equal to 110 degrees. And similarly, the interior angle at D, this angle here, this angle, what will this be? So angle D interior will be 180 minus the exterior angle at D, which is 60 degrees. So 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees. So we have the angles at C and D also now 110 degrees and 120 degrees and we have 30 degrees at the angle at A. The angles at B and C have the same measure uh, which is marked as X in the figure and we have to find the measure of X. So what we're going to use in this uh, part is the fact that the sum of the angles in a pentagon, in any pentagon, what will be the sum of angles in any pentagon? Well, we did this in a previous question that a pentagon has five sides. So we do five minus two into 180. So this will be the sum of angles in any pentagon. And basically the logic behind this was that we can split up the pentagon into three triangular parts by drawing uh, diagonals and the sum of the angles in each part is 180. So the total sum of angles will be 3 into 180. So which I've written as 5 minus 2 into 180. So this will be 3 into 180 or 540 degrees. So the sum of all the angles inside the pentagon should be equal to 540 degrees, which means that angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D plus angle E, th this sum should be equal to 540 degrees. Now let's substitute the values that we have. So angle A is 30 degrees. Angle B, we don't know. It has a measure of X. Angle C has, we have calculated the measure as 110 degrees. And angle D, we calculated as 120 degrees. So 120 degrees. And then angle E is also unknown. Uh, it has a measure of X. And this is equal to 540 degrees. All right, now on the left, we have two terms of X. So we can write this as 2X and then we have 30 plus 110, but which is 140. And then 140 plus 120 is 260. So we get 2X plus 260 degrees is equal to 540 degrees. So this gives us 2X is equal to 540 degrees minus 200 and 60 degrees. So how much is this? 540 minus 260 is 280 degrees. So we get 2x is equal to 280 degrees. So x will be equal to 280 degrees divided by 2 and 280 divided by 2 is 140. So we get the measure of x as 140 degrees. So the answer in part C is that the measure of x is 140 degrees. And that completes part C. Now in part D, we have this pentagon that we see here and only one of the angles of the pentagon is marked as X and we have to find the measure of X. We are not given any other information, but we, we can see that all the sides have this marker. This double bar on each side is present, which means that all the sides are equal. So this pentagon is actually a regular pentagon. A regular pentagon which means that all of its sides are equal and hence all all the angles of this regular pentagon will also be equal so all the angles of this will be equal to will have a measure of x so the five angles of this pentagon will each be equal to x okay now once again we are going to make use of the fact that the sum of the angles in any pentagon will be how much we use this result in the previous part also the sum of the angles in any pentagon will be 5 the number of sides minus 2 into 180 degrees because we can divide up the 
पेंटेगन इन टू दीज मैनी ट्राइंगुलर पार्ट्स थ्री ट्राइंगुलर पार्ट्स सो द टोटल सम विल बी थ्री इंटू वन एट्टी थ्री इंटू वन एट्टी और फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी डिग्रीज सो द सम ऑफ ऑल द फाइव एंगल्स ऑफ दिस पेंटेगन विल बी फाइव फोर्टी डिग्रीज विच मीन्स दैट इफ यू टेक एक्स एंड एड इट फाइव टाइम्स सो एक्स प्लस एक्स प्लस एक्स प्लस एक्स प्लस एक्स द सम ऑफ द फाइव एंगल्स Uh, this will be equal to 540 degrees. So this actually gives us a very simple equation: 5x is equal to 540 degrees, which means that x is equal to 540 degrees divided by 5. Now, what is 540 divided by 5? So 540 divided by 5 is 108. So we get the value of x as 108 degrees. So the answer in part D is. the measure of angle x is 108 degrees and in fact the angle at each vertex of this pentagon will measure 108 degrees and this is because this is a regular pentagon so this completes part d of the question and with this we have completed all the four parts to learn more about how qmath can help you crack school and board exams explore qmath leap a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers